Could big changes be coming to Tampa, Florida? The city is no stranger to hurricanes, but with recent storms Milton and Helene leaving their mark, there's a lingering question on everyone's mind. What will Tampa's future look like? Well, many Tampa residents have weathered the storm with strength and resilience, but the effects of these hurricanes are undeniable. As Tampa works through recovery, we're starting to ask three key questions. Will the demand to live in Tampa change? Will there be an insurance crisis? And will zoning laws change in flood-prone areas? These aren't easy questions to answer, and the long-term impact is still unfolding, but I've approached locals, and Tampa's people are determined and focused on rebuilding stronger than before. Stick with me as we take a deeper dive into the possible changes coming our way. Stay tuned. Now, turning now to the Tampa area, one that was hit really hard by Helene. Several homes and businesses. We are watching the Hurricane Milton very closely at this hour on its ominous path toward Florida. Hurricane also ripped off Tropicana Field. That's the Tampa Bay Ray Stadium that was actually being used as a staging site for free Let me tell you I, I was talking to a buddy of mine who worked for the insurance industry, and he told me that if this storm went into Sarasota. He estimates that the loss would be $100 billion. If it went into the Bay, the loss would be about $200 billion. Will demand to live in Tampa, Florida change? This is amongst many things my real estate team is keeping our eye on. And please, if you're thinking of moving to Tampa or thinking about purchasing a new home, reach out to my team for any of your Tampa real estate needs. Now, I recently read an article in the Tampa Bay Business Journal where Governor DeSantis stated that Hurricane Milton will not weaken demand for living on Florida's Gulf Coast. And that got me thinking, will the demand to live in Tampa, Florida change? Well, Tampa has been one of the most desirable places to live in Florida, offering a mix of vibrant culture, booming job markets, and coastal living. But after hurricanes Milton and Helene, some might wonder, will people still flock to Tampa or will concerns about weather-related risks dampen the city's appeal? In the wake of these storms, the real estate market will be an area to watch closely. Now, before the hurricanes, Tampa was already experiencing significant growth. People were drawn to the sunshine, outdoor activities, and the ability to live near the water. The market was competitive and home prices were rising. But now the question remains, how will recent storm damage impact housing demand? On one side of the coin, demand could continue strong, fueled by those who see Tampa's rebuilding efforts as an opportunity to snag properties. Some buyers may view this as a chance to invest in real estate with potential price dips in affected areas following the hurricanes. We may even see a boom in new construction as homes need to be repaired and updated, driving a surge in modern hurricane-resistant properties. On the flip side, there could be hesitation. Prospective homeowners might be wary of future storm threats or be turned off by rising costs of insurance, flood coverage, or even higher building standards. Some families, they may decide that the possibility of another devastating hurricane is a risk they're just not willing to take. Ultimately, demand might hinge on how Tampa rebuilds and addresses infrastructure and housing in those flood prone areas. Those who believe in the city's long-term prospects will stay or even move in, but we may see others opt for areas further inland. Tampa's resilience, it could become a key selling point. So I personally have many friends and past clients that were affected from the storm, and I initially reached out to lend a hand as many in our community have, but as the dust started to settle, I asked, what's your plan? Well, many of them have stated that they were here to stay and will rebuild, while a few have decided to move a bit more inland, knowing that a simple five to 10 miles can make the world of a difference where you won't have the same issues to deal with. And that made me think, many of you not living here only see what the media shows. The biggest damage comes from surge and most properties affected were those in coastal areas. I live off the river in the city and we did not take on water even though I am technically in an evacuation zone. We did evacuate to my mom's 15 minutes north in Carrollwood out of precaution and only had some wind, which was really not that bad. While watching TV and seeing the damage caused in some areas, I started to wonder what will happen to insurance in Florida and will things be different from where they are today? Post hurricanes, one of the immediate concerns is the potential for an insurance crisis. Floridians, we already face some of the highest home insurance rates in the country and the devastation from Milton and Helene could only exacerbate this. If you're already a homeowner in Tampa, you've probably noticed the steady climb of insurance premiums over the last few years, although having some relief in the last 12 months. Now, after these recent hurricanes, however, could we be looking at even sharper increases, particularly when it comes to flood insurance? 
I've heard of fears that in some neighborhoods, premiums could become so expensive that people are forced to sell, unable to afford coverage on top of mortgage payments and property taxes. Homeowners without flood insurance could find themselves in a precarious position. While Tampa wasn't historically considered as high risk for floods, as some of the other coastal cities, recent hurricanes have shown that more areas are vulnerable than we might have thought. There's potential for a major shift in how insurers view Tampa, pushing more homeowners into mandatory flood insurance zones, regardless of proximity to the water. And what about the state? Do they have a role in this? The state may need to step in and help with regulation and affordability. Florida's insurance market is already under stress and recent storms only make the situation more urgent. There's a chance we could see state-backed insurance programs expanding or new legislation designed to keep insurance accessible for residents. However, this is a long-term process and it's unclear if any meaningful changes will happen quickly enough to provide relief in the short term. For current and potential homeowners, this uncertainty around insurance is a big question mark. If insurance rates skyrocket, will it price out middle-income families or will we see government intervention help keep Tampa livable? I guess time will tell. Insurance is a tricky thing and one thing to understand is that you don't have to live in a flood zone. In fact, there are more areas not in a flood zone than those that are. So will insurance change or will zoning be more of the focus? One of the most significant effects of Hurricane Milton and Helene could be changes in Tampa's zoning laws, especially in areas vulnerable to flooding. Will we see new regulations that restrict building in flood prone areas or will developers continue to push forward with waterfront construction given the high demand? Tampa, like much of Florida, has a unique geography with coastal lowlands, rivers and inlets. Many areas that were considered low to moderate risk for flooding saw significant water damage during these storms. In response, city planners and lawmakers may be forced to reevaluate zoning maps and building codes. Flood prone neighborhoods may face tighter restrictions. We could see new construction projects to require elevated designs or regulations that limit building in specific flood zone altogether. If this happens, it could lead to a reduction in new developments in certain areas, reshaping the future of Tampa's housing market. Then there's the debate between maintaining safety and encouraging development. With Tampa's growing population, developers are eager to build in high demand areas like the waterfront or neighborhoods close to downtown. But in light of the hurricanes, safety concerns could slow down that momentum. City officials and developers will need to find common ground on how to manage future construction without putting people and property at unnecessary risk. Looking back at how South Florida rebounded after Hurricane Andrew back in the 90s, we saw the state adopt new building codes that require impact resistant windows and doors, reinforced roofs and hurricane straps. As the infrastructure was strengthened, the economy grew and is now one of the largest in the state. While the aftermath of Hurricanes Milton and Helene may seem daunting, one thing is for sure, Tampa's spirit remains unshaken. The people of Tampa are known for their resilience, coming together in tough times to rebuild stronger and better than before. The response to these storms has been no different. Neighborhoods are rallying to support each other, businesses are reopening, and the city is quickly moving towards recovery. It's important to note that despite the challenges, Tampa's appeal remains strong. The lifestyle, sense of community, and business opportunities that drew people here in the first place are still very present. Tampa's cultural scene continues to thrive from its vibrant downtown to the stunning beaches and parks that offer endless outdoor recreation. Despite the uncertainty, there could be unique opportunities in Tampa's housing market. As the city rebuilds, new homes and developments may rise, offering state-of-the-art construction design to withstand future storms. For those willing to weather the changes, there may be chances to find homes at competitive prices, especially as some homeowners look to relocate post-storm. Builders and developers could capitalize on this moment by offering resilient, energy-efficient homes that meet higher safety standards. This could lead to Tampa becoming a hub for innovative home design and construction, making the city even more attractive in the long run. For those who want to be part of a dynamic and evolving market, Tampa could remain a top choice. Now let's take a look at the big picture here. At this point, many aspects of Tampa's future are still up in the air. Will the demand to live in the sunny coastal city shift after the hurricanes? Will an insurance crisis create challenges for homeowners? And will the city make sweeping zoning changes to safeguard against future storms? Only time will tell. But one thing is clear, Tampa is a city of resilience. It has survived storms before and its people are committed to not only rebuilding, but improving. 
With the right approach, Tampa could come out stronger, more prepared, and even more desirable than before. For now, it's just a waiting game. In the months and years to come, we'll see how Tampa adapts and whether the market, government, and community can work together to ensure that Tampa remains one of the Florida's most attractive places to live. And if there's one thing we can count on, it's the spirit of Tampa's locals, determined, optimistic, and ready for whatever comes next. So what do you think? Are these changes gonna transform Tampa's future for better or worse? Leave your thoughts below and let's keep the conversation going. And if you're thinking of moving to Tampa, reach out to my team as we would love to be your Tampa real estate team of choice. Make sure to check out all of our channel for more videos all about living in Tampa. And until that next video, I'll catch you later. Yeah. Whoa, you always tell me to do a little something.